Tonight, the People's National Movement has won the general elections in Trinidad and Tobago. But as it stands right now, the United National Congress is awaiting the results of recounts in five key marginal seats. And until we get those, we have not conceded the election. chocolate and chit chat today is wednesday we are going to get into today's topic and today's topic is Trinidad and Tobago politics can you all believe this it was election day on august 10th and you know with all the coronavirus and so many other issues we still was able to have an election so the election came around everybody went and vote no issues and we had the UNC at 19, and we had the PNM at 22. So the PNM won the election, that is the People's National Movement, and the UNC stands for United National Congress. So at this point, we are at a standstill simply because the UNC demanded they get a recount in five seats, five of the marginal seats. Um, so they, that is happening right now. By the time this video is finished, you would know who is running the country of Trinidad and Tobago. So, this is a democratic country, so they are within their rights to do so once it is done in the right time that they have to file a motion to get the recount, which it was done. So that is, that is why it is happening. They don't know how long it will take. Let's see how it goes. The battle for Whitehall. Wow, it has been a real, 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 real comedic week in Trinidad and Tobago, I have to say. So on August 10th, we had an election. UNC, 19, PLM, 22. So after the election was done, the United National Congress, which is the UNC, demanded a recount in five of the marginal seats. They got their recount and... The People's National Movement has won the general elections in Trinidad and Tobago. PNM still won. So, let's get into today's topic. Well, all right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Kendall's Corner. So, interested in that mug? Contact me in the email provided in the description. So, no chocolate, no coffee today. Just want to have a simple conversation. Uh, I want some chips, so let's do this. So, 
So, let's discuss the politics in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. So every five years there's an election called. And in 2015, the People's National Movement, which is the PNM, as you're seeing on your screen right now, uh, they won the election from the United National Congress, which is what you're seeing on your screen right now. And uh, those are the two main parties that we have in Trinidad. The others are little dot. They don't even get one voting election. If they're lucky, they will get about 10. Let me see if they're lucky. So anyway. Mm. Mm. So election. August 10. Today is August 19. Yesterday is when the recount was finished. Recount, you say? Mm, recount. Let's get into this. So, the United National Congress got 19, the PNM got 22. The UNC demanded five national recounted. But as it stands right now, the United National Congress is awaiting the results of recounts in five key marginal seats. And until we get those, we have not conceded. They got the recount. One week later, this is where I'm at, sitting eating some chips and talking to you about the battle for Whitehall. Yesterday, the 18th, when the final final results came out, the PNM won the election. The United National Congress, which is led by Kamala Prasad Bissessa, the founder of the United National Congress was Bastio Pandey, the founder of the People's National Movement was Dr. Eric Williams, he's no longer with us. And we also had the previous leader of the People's National Movement. That would have been Patrick Manning. He is no longer with us either. So now we have Dr. Keith Rowley, who is presently the Prime Minister, and who would be sworn in. I think it's today or tomorrow, we will have the sworn in of the cabinet. So let's get into all the drama. The election came about. And um, when it was all said and done, the UNC got what they got, PNM got what they got. But what is funny, you know, what is painful, you know, at the end of this results, there was so much hate. I have never seen hate like I have seen it after this election on social media. The nasty things that have been said about Africans by the Indian population. It's just very heartbreaking, very, very heartbreaking. Let me just say this. Indian people, African people, we look the same. We look the very same. The only difference is the texture of our hair. Our cultures, you wouldn't believe how close our cultures is, especially when coming to marriages and stuff like that, and family. It is just amazing, but yet we hate each other. So there was this big company that is in Trinidad at a dairy company and one of the owner's daughter made a comment. Very nasty things, I'm not going to repeat them here about Africans. But then we want to boycott the product because of what the daughter said and the daughter this and the daughter need to go from the company and the daughter and the daughter and the daughter and the daughter and the daughter. Let me ask all your question, all you who are watching. Where are these things taught? Are they taught in preschool? Hmm? Are they taught in, in high school? Where are they taught? In colleges? It starts home with the parents, around the table, when they're all sitting around the fancy table, or when they're in the fancy living room. Those privileged, whether it be privileged or, or, or not privileged persons, the hate is started with the parents, the grandparents, the children, the children, 
thought they are children. But you see, in this 2020 that we're living in, you're grown enough, you're wise enough. There's too much information out there. Not to educate yourself on hate. And you don't have to educate yourself on hate. You have to say to yourself, oh, wait a minute. I wonder if my parents and my grandparents' views about the African race is really, is really true. Does it really even make sense? We look alike. We, are, we all look alike. It's just a different texture in our head. So why it is, I must hate them because they have a few rotten eggs in the bunch who will do a lot of wrong things. Same like my race. My race will have a lot of rotten things. No, these individuals can't think that way. So they will continue that hateful cycle and carry it on and carry it on. And it's only when they are caught, they will say, I am sorry. What you're sorry for? You're sorry that you get caught? But I said, I made a comment or a post recently. I don't blame the girl who made those comments about the African race, really nasty things about the African race. I blame her parents and her grandparents because that is who taught her to hate the other race. That race, not other race, because any other race is better than the African race, apparently, to her and her family. And it's just sad. And I will never understand why people would hate. And to you African people who choose to hate another race, for what? What do you hate another race for? Why do you hate them? What is your purpose for hating them? Because you were taught to hate other races? Why? So because your grandmother and your mother hate another race, you're going to grow up hating them? You can't figure out for yourself, okay, I hate you. Because my grandmother hate, grandmother hate me, but you know what? I think in myself, this hate ain't making no sense because this person ain't do me nothing. It don't make sense. Hate, just it's just ignorance. It's just ignorance. If two adults, we are all well functioning human beings, sit down and have a sensible conversation. And if you know this person just don't like you, part your ways. You don't have to be nasty. You don't have to. You don't have to go down the exact same road that that person is going on. And that's what I saw. That's what I saw over the past week that we have been waiting for results. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a week. So I will be sitting on here and waiting for results. And the amount of hate that is coming from the Indian population against the Africans. And then, then I'm going to see a lot of Africans making a lot of ugly, ugly comments as well, calling them all kind of names that I would, again, I would not speak here. And I would ask myself to you, African people, why? 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 Hmm? Monkey see, monkey do? Why would you go down the same nasty road that they are going on? Because they do it, you would do it too? So, uh, what point you're already proven? You're only proving you are, you are as ignorant as they are who are making those comments. Now, I'll tell you why there is so much hate within the parties. Because in Trinidad, there is a lot of tribal voting, meaning the UNC have a lot of, is, is an Indian, more Indian based party, and so is the PLM. Now, don't get me wrong, in both parties, there are a lot of different races, right? But what I'm saying is, the most amount of Indian population you would get in the African, you wouldn't see it in the, in the other race. You know, you would see it more, the UNC is more Indian and the PLM is more Africans. I don't know where the Dogla and the mixed breeds would fit in to these two parties. I think we need a whole other political party the Dogra population and the mixed breed population because in Trinidad we have a lot of Kalalu parts. You understand? My grandmother here and she had was very straight and to the end you will get a little curl. You understand? I have sisters in my family who don't have curly hair like myself, one other sister. I have nieces that have curly hair. I have my daughter also. So let me tell all you something. You see, hate it, it don't make sense. So we need a whole other political, pa political party, apparently, if we continue to vote like this, you know? But I'll tell you why I believe the People's National Movement won this election. This is just my theory. And the campaign was very dirty on the United National Congress side, the ads was humiliating African people, have them eating grass, 
have them like vagrants on the street begging for, for, for money and food for the children. It was really nasty, really nasty. And the population was really upset, like, okay, so why are you having the African population going on the ground and eating grass? Why are you having the African population being like vagrants on the street begging for food? It was. So people was like, so why is it only the African? Why it can't be? Why we can't see none of these type of ads? There is Indian people doing this type of thing. And that was one of the main issues. And then also the political leader of the United National Congress made a lot of insulting comments to the Prime Minister at that time, and which is Dr. Keith Rowley, who is the Prime Minister and who won the election again and is to be sworn in today or tomorrow, I'm not sure exactly. She made a lot of insulting comments about him and his colour and all of that kind of thing. So that's why I said not because when this woman made this comment about how black people did that to the grandparents, the uncle and everybody else that she said in that post. I was like, girl, if you're so intelligent intelligent and black that African people is so dotish and dunsy, then you would know that you are black just like me. The different shades of melanin within our skin is the same. The only different things is, is, is the texture in our hair. Why are you so insulted? So I so it's not even about edu edu educating yourself. They're not even edified to say I'm making a certain comment. You're not even song and educated in no way. Because if you are educated, which I believe you are, you won't say certain things about the African population, which also represents you because you're black. Your skin color is the same as, as many Afro Trinidadians. So why the hate? Hmm. And that is what had me really, really sad in this election, the hate. It was getting to be too much. It was getting to be too much. And we tend to blame the offspring and not the parent for what the offspring is doing. And it was clear and simple. The offspring is just acting out what she was taught by her parents and her grandparents. And at some point, the cycle needs to stop. Somebody needs to stop that cycle. All the apologies wouldn't be good enough. You know why? Because you're only apologizing because you were caught saying real nasty thing about the prime minister about the african population and calling them all sorts of names and calling yourself white class and myself i was like what part of you is white huh our white class people what part of you white you're not caucasian in any any part of you no part of your dna screams caucasian what is your problem? No part of you and scream Chinese. I mean, it's not funny. But we need to stop this. This country is too small. Who built Trinidad and Tobago? The slaves, right? The slaves were who? The African population, right? When slavery was abolished in 1833, they need to get someone, a group of people to pick up that slack. What did they do? They bring in Indians into the country to do that they were paid someone made a comment telling you it was a lot of race thing going on within this past week while this recount was going on someone even made a comment stating hmm? they walk off the people walk and now we have to come here to, to, to pick up the slack for them um since when slavery was a job you also educated right where and when slavery was a job they were paid to do what paid by whom are you really serious? I was like, I didn't comment. What I was saying is like, mm, somebody please cool this girl. Somebody come and please cool this very educated human being who is insulting the African population. Because she sounds like a real dunce, the same dunce that they call in the African population. Because it's the most stupidest thing I've ever heard. Since when slavery was a job that you had to come here, that race had to come to Trinidad to pick up the slack because the African population woke up the job. Are you really serious right now? And at that point is when I started to, to just get really, really mad because it was too much. And I will say, and I have had a few people say, are you crazy to say that this girl isn't responsible for what she said about the African population? Of course, she needs to be held accountable for what she said, but let's not 
this nasty fact that she was taught this by her parents and everybody want the parents to do shit this and parents to do shit that so anybody doing the parents anything anybody holding the parents accountability for what she said apparently not because it's not the parents fault even though it's the parents who taught her all what she knows it's just stupid to me and if the parents wasn't endorsing that type of thinking when there is no way that that kind of words would come out her mouth because her parents would have shut it down immediately. They will not tolerate it. But they, they didn't have no issue with it. Because why? That is how they probably think themselves. Because if I know my daughter is carrying on to the conversation about another race who looks just like me, but just with different hair texture. But the point is a whole different race. I would shut it down. I will not have it. Whether it is a race that looks like me, whether it's a race light as, as bright as, as light as the sky, I will not tolerate that. It is not hate and race ain't coming around me. Okay? So I will never support race. Right? Yes, we all have our own ethnicity and we, we you know our cultures and where we do things. So we have to respect each other's cultures, that's a fact. But don't disrespect each other's race, especially a race that looks just like you. And let's accept the results. So the battle for White House is finally over. There will be a swearing in of the cabinet today, which is the 19th of August. Or tomorrow, which will be 20th, I'm not sure. So I don't want to, you know, state facts and say, well, yes, this is it. So that is where we are. That's what happened over the election period. So I have also said that, you see, election, people mustn't vote for party. People must vote for country. If you vote for country, the country would be a better place. I have always said that, you know, and we always must keep in mind, when a party is voted in and wasn't already in office, keep in mind, there is a lot of projects that the previous government started that this, pre this present government have to pick up this slack to complete before they could start what they had promised the country. So it will take time. So we, not, we need to stop thinking, oh, they promised this and they promised that. The first five years that the men come in there, they really can't do much because they have to spend most of that time finishing up the projects that the other government left in place or of things that was left halfway completed while the other government was there. That has to be done. So if, I just always say, if a government get two terms and it's still to do nothing, bye. Bye. Because that first five years you get, you do what you had to do, right? This five years should be what you wanted to give the population in 2015 when you won. And then you have one another five years. So this next five years, you're supposed to be really implementing those things plus what you promised in this campaign season that we had here, which was just about two months, we really had it, you know? So I really hope that they work hard and do what they have to do to get Trinidad to a better place. And we work together as a country to beat COVID and send it back into the pits of hell where it's supposed to be. And we continue to build each other and lift each other and not spread hate. Thank you for joining me on a little chit chat about the politics that is happening in Trinidad and Tobago and where it's at at this moment. And I do hope that you will have an awesome day and may the rest of your week be blessed and highly favored. Thanks for watching another episode of Chocolate and Chit Chat.